Hello everyone. After a good night's sleep, what's better than a good breakfast to start your day? All that we need is a cup of tea and a crisp piece of butter toast first thing in the morning. But with limited time to prepare breakfast and get ready for work or to do other household chores, you don't have time to stand by the stove and wait for your toast to turn brown. Well, an electrical toaster could be just the thing to get your toast ready in time. You probably have an idea as to how an electrical toaster works. Electrical energy is converted to heat energy. But do you know that quantum physics plays an important role in toasting your bread? Bread toast which you enjoy while sipping on your morning tea is able to make its way to your plate only because of quantum physics. The heating element of the toaster glows red to toast a slice of bread. Toasters are generally referred as to why quantum physics came into existence. Now, let's take a closer look as to what happens inside a toaster. As the video gave a short summary about the relationship between the toaster and the quantum physics, I would like to continue ahead about the theory and mechanism of toaster. If you look down inside a toaster, you will have noticed a row, rows of glowing red wires facing the bread. When electricity flows through these wires, they get hot and then fire their heat toward the bread like dozens of miniature radiators. When electricity flows through a wire, energy is transmitted from one end of the wire to the another. The moment of energy is bit like a water flowing down a pipe. The electrical energy is carried down by electrons, the tiny particles inside the atoms of metals that make up the wire. The electricity does not easily flow through the metals. The metals slow down the electrons and hold up the current, which is re resistance. As resistance is the measure of the tendency to the material to resist the flow of an electric current in physics. The higher the resistance, the hotter the metal will get. This happens because of the friction of the electron. The wire, the wires begin to heat up and glow red. The coils are producing infrared radiation. These heats is what toasts the bread. The most common way for toaster to create the infrared radiation is to use nichrome wire wrapped back and forth across a mica sheet. Electrical energy flows into the toaster from wire plugged into the domestic electric supply. The electric current flows through a series of thin filaments connected together but spaced widely enough apart to toast the whole bread surface. The filaments are also thin that they glow red hot when the electricity flows through them. Like a series of small radiator, radiators, the filaments beam heat towards the bread in the toaster. The steady supply of heat rapidly cooks the bread. There are filaments on each wall of the toaster, so the two sides of the bread cook at the same time. Toasters are generally referred to the reason why quantum physics came into existence. Let's take a closer look inside. The first chapter opens with sunrise or more accurately light an apt beginning for both a quantum primer and the morning. Orzel, the physicist, uses these as a launch pad to talk about the standard model of particle physics powering through gravity, electromagnetism, the strong and weak nuclear forces, a somewhat tougher start than I expected, but a good setup for the rest of the book. In my favorite chapter, the heating element Planck's desperate trick, Orzel talks about the red glow of heating element on his toe top or the coil in his toaster to explain thermal radiation and the color of light emitted by a hot object. Orzel goes into the history of one of the major conundrums that physicists in the late 1800s were dealing with why all the objects of different material heated to some temperature glow that particular shade of red. At this stage, physicists were still trying to work out that the intricacies of the spectrum of light and they did not know why the light emitted by an object is independent of its composition. The author provides an excellent history and explanation of how Max Planck introduces his quantum hypothesis of light suggesting that it could only be emitted in discrete chunks of energy or quanta that depend on the frequency of light multiplied by a universal constant. This is why this is was the truly the birth of quantum mechanics and I enjoyed Olsel's succinct explanation as well as the historical perspective.